Uh, welcome, Ahmed. Thanks for joining. I can see you are writing to everyone. So we can start. <coughs> and on the way, I will be adding participants from the waiting room. Uh, welcome, everyone, to uh, another green webinar session. Uh, this time organized by Kuwait Green Building Council and Alpa Limited, who is one of our corporate members since uh, 2019. It's a great opportunity to join uh, forces with uh, our corporate members and highlight some of the sustainability issues and solutions to the sustainability problems that we have uh, in our uh, construction sector. Today, we have one very important uh, topic to discuss about and uh, our speaker. Uh, we'll present more about that. Uh, we will be talking, I'm sure most of you heard about the well building rating system, but until now we didn't have a chance to talk about it. Uh, building, well building rating system and then recently new update, uh, the well health safety rating, uh, both are tackling challenges of uh, health and well being of occupants uh, of uh, buildings. Uh, Tasneem Bakri, who is operations uh, coordinator at Alpan Limited and uh, with a background in architecture, like educational background in architecture, we, uh, who is also well accredited professional, lead AP accredited professional, uh, will tell us more uh, about these two systems. So I will hand over the microphone to uh, Tasneem, tell us more about your role in Alpine and your background and we can start the session. If any of participants has a question related to topic today or any other question related to membership with Koi Green Building Council, please write in a chat box. We'll try to answer as soon as we finish the session. If you don't have or run out of time, I will try to uh, reply to you via email or any other means. You just provide your contacts. Thank you, Tasneem. Welcome. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you so much for introducing me and thank you to everyone uh, who dialed in today. I'll try to share the screen. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, now? I can see. Okay, thank you everyone again uh, for joining. I'll uh, introduce myself again. As Sandra said, I have a background in architecture engineering. Uh, I'm also a well AP, well faculty member, uh, and the lead AP. Uh, Mostly, I'll start with uh, Alpen's history as a sustainability consultancy. Alpen was founded in 2007. Uh, our headquarters in, is in Mustar City, Abu Dhabi in UAE. And um, our focus is on delivering sustainability consultancy, whether in Well, Lead, Briam, GSAS, Estidama, and uh, Mustadam. So um, we focus on delivering uh, green building solutions and uh, consultancy to uh, developments all around the world. Today, we will focus on the well building standard, which is um, the standard that um, most of the people are talking about right now because it focuses on human health and well being. Uh, and I think this is uh, the most building standard that has uh, a high focus right now since we are uh, in the tough times of the pandemic. Um, so well building standard stood out as the building standard uh, for health. So healthy buildings in general are a movement right now. And since 2014, there was a focus to uh, try and shift our full focus on um, energy and environmental design. Uh, to include as well the focus on human health and well-being and how the buildings affect the occupants in them. So as I said, well focuses on people. It has synergies and it complements other green building rating systems, but the focus and the aim uh, from well, as, as we're going to see today in details, is that each concept in well focuses on something that relates to human health and well-being. So if we think about health in general, most of us tend to think about uh, our physical health. So the well building standard uh, started with the definition from World Health Organizations that health is not only the physical aspects, but it also includes the mental and social well being. So it's not only the, the absence of disease. 
So this is where the focus of the well-building standard actually combined different aspects of our mental health and social health as well. Um, when you think about uh, our health in general and the factors that affect our health, uh, we can focus on the lifestyle or, he or health behaviors as variables or things that affect our health. Our uh, medical care, the medical care that we receive also affects our health and of course our genes. But most of the effect or more than 50% of the effect actually comes from physical or social environment. This is where we need to think about the buildings that we spend time in and a lot of time, especially right now. So uh, it was proven by research that we spend approximately 90% of our time indoors. So the environment is a large determinant of uh, our overall health. And um, actually this percentage might have increased in the recent times as we're using buildings more and more. So the environment has the uh, ability and capability to actually change um, the way we live, the way we interact, uh, live, work, learn, and relax. So all of these actions and all of our behaviors could actually be changed by the environment around us. We could have cues that uh, actually include some uh, behavioral changes in our habits. So I'll be telling you in details about the well-building standard. Uh, the well-building standard uh, has two parts, which is the standard and the well-AP credential, which is well-accredited professional. The, community of well-accredited professionals are the professionals who help uh, project teams uh, reaching well certification. So the well-building standard uh, focuses on building design and operations as well as construction uh, as agents of public health. So uh, well focuses on verifying these aspects, monitoring them on a long-term basis and measuring that impact on the occupant's health. So it's not only about the design, uh, some of the construction aspects and operation of the building, but it's also about our behaviors after we occupy these buildings. So the team behind WELL is the International Well Building Institute, uh, which is the leading, they're leading the global movement to transform buildings um, and the way we, we thrive and we occupy these buildings. It is also administered by GBCI or Green Business Certification uh, Incorporate, which is the same uh, third party that administers LEED certification, if you're familiar with LEED certification for green buildings. Uh, just to start with a simple timeline of WELL, WELL started off with the launching in 2014 uh, it was launched after a very rigorous and long process of research, which included uh, scientists, engineers, and even medical practitioners. So, um, so they all came up with this well-building standard that includes evidence-based uh, proofs and um, evidence that helps uh, the buildings achieve such features which have a direct correlation to our health and well-being. In 2017, this expanded to the community standard or um, the well community standard pilot. This community standards actually increased the scope to the district scale or the community scale. Uh, and then in 2018, there was the well V2 pilot uh, because since well uh, is on a continuous pursuit of improvement and development, it incorporated some of the feedback uh, the industry feedback uh, that they got and um, eventually WELL V2 pilot was launched. In 2019, we have the WELL portfolio program, which allows organizations to actually certify multiple buildings uh, or monitor their performance in terms of health and well-being, whether they want to um, administer some of the WELL features in some uh, locations of their organization. And the most recent addition to the well building rating system is the well health safety rate rating. Uh, this recent uh, rating is focused on fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. There was a task force that was formed uh, from IWBI and uh, medical practitioners and researchers and scientists who focused on taking some of the well features and optimizing them for the well health safety rating. 
uh, we will be speaking uh, in details about the well health safety as well later. So well B2 uh, is applicable to all types of buildings and it has 10 concepts. Uh, the concepts which you can see now on the screen, it starts from air, water, uh, nourishment. Uh, it also focuses on light, movement, thermal comfort, sound materials, and even mind and community for the aspects that we talked about, about the mental side and social side of health. So well, uh, just like um, many other green building rating systems, well is focused on, uh, it's a points-based scoring. So the building would get a certain rating level depending on the points that they achieve with the features. So uh, we have the well silver, well gold, and well platinum depending on uh, the points count. So I'll start uh, explaining some of the features or all of the features of well uh, in details. We'll try to have a look at what well addresses in terms of uh, each of these features. So starting with uh, the air concept, the air concept emerged after uh, air pollution was actually rated the 10th most important cause of uh, ill health in the world population. Uh, we started uh, realizing that actually the indoor uh, air pollution is even could be 10 times worse than outdoor air pollution. So this is where the well building standard comes with performance metrics, things you can measure indoors, uh, the ventilation strategies, your operable windows, uh, what options you're giving your occupants, the air filtration that goes into the space, construction pollution management. So it starts off from the construction activities and the way air pollution is handled uh, during the construction activities. Uh, and also we have the smoking ban maintenance and operations, which is really important, especially in this time and uh, microbe and mold control. This of course is just a portion of uh, the focus of well on air concept because it's the, um, I guess you could say it's the most tense or intense uh, concept within the well building standard. The second concept, which is the water concept, um, it actually focuses on the quality of water that we're consuming and whether we are encouraged or not on uh, drinking enough water. So it is known that uh, the mistrust of safety of water, if you're not uh, trusting the quality of the water you have, uh, which happens in uh, many parts of the world, this actually could decrease uh, your intake of water and increase your intake of uh, sugar sweetened beverages. So the well building standard focuses on certain performance metrics, uh, control of uh, certain bacteria such as Legionella control, treatment, drinking water promotion. So if you think about certain things that focus on um, the space that you have, even if they are small changes that change uh, the behavior of the occupants, such as putting the uh, water coolers in accessible locations in the building, uh, it would give cues to the occupants that drinking water is more accessible to them and will lead eventually to uh, certain changes and increases positive changes in their uh, water intake. So the water concept also focuses on that. Uh, it focuses on hand washing and moisture management as well, since it has uh, an effect on the materials and the building structure. The nourishment concept uh, is also a bit related uh, because it focuses on uh, increasing human health and well-being from within. You focus on what we consume as building occupants. So uh, sometimes your environment or the building that you're spending most of your time in could dictate uh, some nourishment or um, eating habits. So well focuses on the nourishment concept by um, showing project teams how they can uh, include the healthy eating as a habit for the building occupants, uh, restricting all, um, all foods that are fast foods or high in sugar or fats. So it has certain aspects uh, and limitations in terms of nourishment. Uh, it also encourages project teams to actually uh, provide transparency, uh, food labeling and focusing on uh, allergy management and allergy uh, allergens labeling. 
So many aspects of this nourishment concept actually could connect directly to our behaviors on a daily basis, such as uh, the evident fruits and vegetables. For example, if you have um, within your office space, if you have snacks uh, that are unhealthy on a daily basis in front of you, that would uh, actually lead to, to your increase in um, consumption of uh, unhealthy foods. But if you find, for example, fruits and vegetables that are accessible, that are in front of you every day, that might actually lead to a higher intake of uh, healthy food. One of the interesting uh, features in uh, the nourishment concept focuses on the portion man management as well. So it's not only the food that we're eating, but also the portions. So. Um, this is one of the concepts that was integrated in a part of the uh, features of well, which is the Del Booth illusion. If you imagine that what you have uh, in front of us on the screen right now is two plates. So the white is the plate and uh, the black dot, you can imagine that this is the food. So if you have two plates, these are the sizes of the plates that you have and um, you were introduced with these two plates. It's a, it's a human, um, tendency to actually feel that this amount of food was larger on the smaller plate. So you would get full in a shorter time or with the same amount of uh, food. So the two black dots are the same amount of food. If you put them on different sizes of plates, this could actually create an illusion and uh, would lead you to portion management. So things like these uh, behavioral aspects that were uh, proven by research to actually make a difference in people's lives were uh, integrated within the well-building uh, standard. So the concept of light uh, actually focuses on uh, several aspects such as visual equity, providing enough light, uh, providing light that is not too much, uh, uh, limiting glare, for example, limiting the desynchronization of the circadian rhythm. If you're not familiar with the circadian rhythm, uh, this is actually uh, a type uh, of rhythm that it's, it's basically our human clock uh, in which we respond to the sunlight. Uh, and it actually affects uh, our sleep. It affects many aspects of our alertness. So um, with circadian lighting design, this could be a response to, um, to the circadian rhythm uh, desynchronization. And actually if managed well, it could be uh, solved and it could lead to better sleep quality and better alertness in the times of day that we need uh, this alertness. The light concept actually focuses also on occupant controls, uh, on glare controls, as I mentioned, daylighting access if we are providing daylight, uh, if we're providing uh, light quality and the, the exposure in which we were providing that light. Uh, the movement concept uh, is also a, a very behavioral concept because it focuses on increasing the encouragement and the motivation that the building occupants have for movement and physical activity. I think most of us, uh, we're not as physically active as we should be. And um, if the buildings are dictating some of uh, the aspects, for example, if the stairs are very attractive for you to take, uh, if you have certain cues around you uh, that actually lead to uh, a more active, um, a more active day, then this would be a way for the building to actually change our behavior. So with active furnishings, for example, um, treadmill desks or portable pedals that you have under the desk, you can make small changes um, uh, and actually change the behavior of the building occupants. Uh, the next concept is the thermal comfort. Thermal comfort is actually the number one um, the number one or the highest contributing factor to uh, building occupant satisfaction levels with the building. So if you ask people about how they're perceiving their space or their office, it is sometimes uh, the number one thing that people remember if the office is too cold or too hot, if you're not thermally uh, comfortable. So the well building standard focuses on uh, several aspects within the uh, HVAC systems, uh, thermal zoning, uh, and if you're providing enough flexibility and freedom for people to change their locations, to change their, uh, their temperatures. 
uh, and individual controls with uh, also humidity control and focusing on monitoring these aspects of thermal comfort uh, on a regular basis. The next concept is the sound concept. The sound concept is, is uh, actually one of the concepts that also affects employees' productivity. Uh, if you are in, a, in an office space that is noisy or the HVAC is making uh, a loud noise, this would actually affect or hinder your productivity, your focus, and memory uh, retention. So the well building standard focuses on absor sound absorption, masking, mapping, including these aspects of design that could actually make a difference within uh, certain aspects of the office space or whichever uh, the type of space that you're in. The materials concept actually combines, most of these concepts have um, a way or a synergy with materials concept because it focuses on all of the materials that you have in your space, uh, the emissions from these materials, uh, re reduction of uh, pollutants, VOCs, uh, the pesticide use as well, which also connects to the air concept. So uh, it's a synergy and these concepts complement each other. But for the materials concept, you need to focus on the structure that you have, the even the cleaning products that you're using within the space. Uh, one of my favorite concepts is the mind concept because it's uh, more often than not uh, a part of the design process or the construction process and the operation of building that we do not focus on. So uh, the well building standard focuses on the mental health of the building occupants. Um, it actually tries to limit the, uh, the mental health problems that building occupants can face with access to nature uh, and biophilic design, with focus support, sleep support, business travel, even uh, parts of the policies that you have to run the building for the future. Uh, the Well Building Standard also recommends a lot of changes that uh, can actually uh, create a major change within your building occupants. The last concept is the community concept. The community concept also relates to the mental health uh, concept because it's a feeling of uh, connectedness with your community. How can the building actually support the connectedness of the community uh, and the building occupants? With civic engagement, certain policy changes, uh, mother support, parent and family support, a certain plans such as the emergency preparedness plan, which uh, in the recent times was proven as one of the most important plans to have, the emergency preparedness plans, and how um, the building or the project team and owner will be um, combating any emergencies. So the well standard is, de is definitely global. It could be uh, applied in, in uh, all over the world and was already applied in uh, a high number of countries. It is customizable. This is only possible because the well building standard is customizable. So if you're in the Middle East, certain aspects of the well building standard, you feel that they don't apply to you, your project team, your location, uh, or any of these uh, things, it's customizable. You can pick and choose uh, the features that are uh, important to you if they are optimizations and not uh, minimum requirements in well. So uh, the last thing is that well has an impact. Uh, it strengthens the strategies with the verified performance. One of the things that the well building standard prides itself with is the performance verification. Unlike uh, other green building standards, the well building standard actually has a part where the performance of the building is actually verified uh, and a well assessor or a well performance testing agent comes to the site and measures some of the aspects uh, that are applied within the building. We have a dynamic scorecard for the well building standard. So IWBI has the scorecard in order for the project team to pick and choose the features that they want, um, reach information about the features more easily and try to customize their approach. There's also the concept of alternative adherence paths where you can um, actually apply to um, deliver the feature intent in different ways than uh, the ones that are suggested in the well building standard. 
There's a dedicated support structure from IWBI where you have a well coaching contact uh, specifically there for your project team, uh, specifically there to help you throughout the process of documentation and performance verification. So as I said in the beginning, the well building standard connects to other green building standards. And there's actually a very useful tool from IWBI, which is the well crosswalks. This actually helps you look at the certain features that are uh, synergies or equivalent in these, um, in these building standards. And you could actually sometimes replace some of these if you have achieved them for another uh, green building standard. So the value behind well is um, definitely very evident. The ROI of well um, shows with the positive impact that it has on uh, the building occupants at first. It also has a positive impact on building lease rates and the value of uh, properties. Um, it also has a positive impact on occupant satisfaction. So if you uh, imagine that well certification was applied in, a, in an office setting, that means that you have more productive employees, uh, you're supporting their health and wellness, the building functionality is also supported with the well certification and energy usage as well. So what it means for employees is that uh, they're in an environment that is focused on their health, their productivity therefore increases, they have uh, an improved satisfaction and happiness at work. This, is also, uh, this also applies where you look at it from the perspective of the companies because they attract and retain top talent uh, and they promote uh, their employees' health and well-being. So um, in terms of uh, engagement, employee engagement or participation from the occupants, uh, if you imagine that you have all these features and all these uh, aspects in a building that is not um, well certified and you're trying to achieve things to increase people's health and well-being, you're trying to have some initiatives, but uh, they're not structured in the format that we have here with the well certification, that means the participation rate of your um, occupants is very low. So with the well certification, participation in these initiatives or in these uh, features actually increases. So we can look at some um, case studies. So 80% of CBRE Madrid employees uh, believe that after the well certification, uh, the certif the office setting actually increased their productivity. This also happened in Semantic, uh, where 77% of the employees reported on their collaboration and socialization that it actually improved after the well certification. They actually uh, reported as well for the innovation that it increased, uh, it witnessed a 30% increase. Uh, in Landsec, uh, there was a 40% increase in air quality satisfaction reported by the employees and 25% increase in satisfaction with the lighting. So if we look at uh, the ap applicability of well right now, so this picture was valid actually a couple of days ago, but it keeps increasing with a rate of almost 1 million square foot registered every day. Uh, because there's an increased focus on uh, creating healthy buildings, focusing on people's health uh, with the buildings that we design and construct and operate. Uh, so right now, uh, the well building standard was applied in 64 countries. Uh, there are more than uh, 13,000 uh, well, apologies. There are more than 13,000 well APs uh, in 94 countries and uh, the registered number of, um, of projects are more than 4,600 projects. So as you can see, it's always increasing. People are more and more interested in healthy buildings and this movement. So to begin the well journey, the project would have to uh, at first assess the applicability and feasibility of the well certification, implement these features, verify them, whether with the document uh, review or the performance verification, and then monitor uh, these aspects that uh, we applied. 
The well IP community as well as, uh, as I mentioned, the well accredited professionals help uh, project teams achieve this uh, well certification. They also raise awareness about the well building standard. So to become a well AP, you need to register, study for the exam, earn the credential and you renew your uh, credential every two years. Uh, I included a, a short introduction to the well health safety rating, which is very popular uh, right now since people are uh, looking at ways to reopen buildings and to reopen with confidence. So the well health safety rating uh, it's an evidence-based uh, rating from the uh, well v2 features so as i mentioned before there's a task force um, from uh, medical practitioners scientists and researchers who focused on finding the best practices in terms of building operations and maintenance uh, to fight covid19 or other infectious diseases so the well health safety rating looks at uh, operational policies, maintenance protocols, emergency plans, and stakeholder education and engagement. So it's a much more concise version of the well certification because it only focuses on these aspects. Uh, it doesn't have a performance verification, uh, but you do have to apply for a document uh, review. So the importance of this well health safety rating right now is that we're, we're uh, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, focusing on operational interventions is very important. Focusing on the cleaning practices is very important. Emergency preparedness programs for now and for the future, uh, health services resources, the health services that you're providing for uh, your building occupants or your employees. Air, water, uh, air and water quality management is also very important since uh, pollutants and bacteria and viruses can actually uh, be airborne and transmit through uh, the air that we breathe. We also have the stakeholder engagement and communication, which is also very important for us to benefit from these features and, uh, and these concepts. So with the health service resources, for example, the COVID-19 task force has taken some of the aspects that we have in the well V2, but could support uh, right now with some additions to, um, to these features that are focused on fighting uh, COVID-19. So the mental health aspect is also very important here since as you all know, right now, mental health is really important. People are um, more uh, focused on it since we need recovery from uh, the pandemic. And uh, the World Mental Health Day was actually yesterday where the World Health Organization announced that uh, the focus of it is increasing the investment on mental health. So this is also one of the aspects that World Health Safety Rating focuses on. Uh, so when you achieve the well health safety rating, you would uh, receive a seal uh, that the vision for this seal is that it would indicate the buildings that are uh, health safety rated and it would indi indicate the readiness of this um, building to actually confidently reopen and confidently uh, include occupants. I included a short uh, brief case study of our offices, Alpen Limited in Masdar City. Uh, we were actually the first well certified project in the Middle East. And uh, just last week, we got the well, the first well health safety uh, rating in the Middle East as well. So within our offices, we focused on all the aspects of uh, the well building rating system. We have 100% natural lighting uh, and views to the outside, which actually led to minimize disruption to the circadian system of our employees, enhance the productivity uh, and increase the quality of their sleep. We actually uh, focus also on indoor air quality with air uh, standalone air purifiers. Uh, we also have um, air quality monitors that keep indicating the, the level of uh, air quality that we have at the office. We have many initiatives that go in line with this well certification, such as uh, fitness activities, the Alp and Healthy uh, initiative, focusing on food and uh, focusing on periodic wellness assessment for our employees. So we have the system that uh, we assess the wellness of our employees and reassess it again after applying individual uh, action plans. 
mental health is also very important important at Alpen, where we focus on stress management, uh, promoting leadership, women empowerment, uh, and family support and flexibility. During this uh, pandemic, it was uh, really important to focus on the flexibility aspects and the emergency preparedness as indicated in the uh, well health safety rating. The satisfaction of our employees is also monitored on a regular basis, which is also uh, an integral part of the well building standard. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, you have some questions. Uh, I'd be happy to take your questions and thank you so much for listening. <clears throat> thank you, Tasneem. I was listening very carefully. I actually visited one well certified office in Doha and it was a completely eye opening experience um, of how space actually can influence the way you work, how you feel, um, how you actually act, how you can change your behavior. So I would like to start with one question. If you are working in a well certified space, uh, what is your personal experience uh, uh, and what kind of behavioral benefits and health and uh, well-being you can, uh, uh, you know, like explain uh, and start from yourself. Yeah what uh, you experienced yeah. while working in this kind of uh, certified uh, environment. Yes, so for me personally, I witnessed many changes in my behavior. So at first, some of the aspects that I mentioned, such as the fruit and vegetable availability, if on an everyday basis, you go to an office where everyone is eating healthy, uh, you have healthy initiatives, I believe it would be really hard if you come inside with, a, with an unhealthy snack <laughs> so, so it's very hard to keep doing what you do wrong and that the things that you know that are wrong. And when you see this improvement in behavior and it's a collective action where your whole community around you is actually contributing to it, that would actually change your behavior uh, in the longer term. I'm now enjoying more and more uh, snacks that are healthier. Um, I'm also participating in the uh, amazing initiatives that we have for uh, Alpen Healthy, where we focus on uh, fitness activities, uh, health activities, and this behavioral change was actually witnessed across um, all of our employees. Everyone is more motivated to focus on their health, to focus on um, what food they're consuming, to focus on how the environment is actually uh, changing the way they work. So people are now more aware what makes them more productive um, and what doesn't. So this, this awareness is actually the, the, the biggest change in behavior. Do you have the monitors that uh, shows the qual air quality within the space and humidity level and CO2 level? Is it like yeah. available to everyone? Yeah, that's yes, what I've it's seen. It's available to everyone within the uh, air quality monitor. So you have everyone uh, speaking about these levels. If, if, uh, uh, if they're aware of the levels that uh, are there, this is actually the point of having a display that communicates this uh, to, the, to the occupants. Great. Uh, we have one question, actually two. Can you give us examples of air and water quality management that comply with well? Okay, so this is uh, both the air and water concepts um, are actually more focused on the design and construction aspects of the building. So uh, the things you have within your design and construction in terms of the HVAC systems, uh, the air filtration that you have, Within your construction, what are the, um, the aspects of construction pollution management that you have? If you're applying uh, mats, if you're applying um, certain revol revolving doors within your design to actually uh, limit indoor air pollution from the beginning, from the construction, all the way to uh, your design, um, all the way to your operations, this would actually increase the air quality. So, Within the operations side, you have, as we just mentioned, the air quality monitors, the air purifiers that you have, uh, all these aspects that actually help you continue to uh, preserve the level of air quality that you achieved with your design and construction practices. And also for the water concept, when you look into the quality of water that you have 
uh, within your plumbing system, if you're looking at uh, moisture management within the building, you actually have to continue monitoring it. So the well building standard actually has a regular submissions that you need to uh, make in order to um, certify your building or renew your certification. So for the air and water quality management, you would have to continue monitoring these on a regular basis. Mm, the next question, thank you, Tasneem. Uh, Ahmed asks, can you talk briefly about AP exam, if it's the same as a lead, like well AP exam? I believe this is a question, like. Yeah, so the well AP uh, exam, it's also um, administered by GBCI. I think this is the best time to actually uh, get the well AP exam since uh, IWBI is offering a discount on it. Yes. Um, the the question format if uh, you're asking about the question format is also a multiple choice question it's similar to uh, the lead exam but of course you would have to uh, go through all the material that are specific to the well building standard this is the great idea to actually organize a preparation course uh, maybe we can discuss it later uh, there are no more questions in a chat box but uh, if any of you have a question, can uh, unmute uh, and ask Tasmin directly while we are still having the time. Um, if no more questions, I would like to be yeah, here. There is one more. Thank you, Tasmin, for the great information. My question is, can we transform an old facility to, the, to be well facility by all categories you mentioned or have to be lead building applied? This is a great question, actually. Yes. So this is an amazing question. So yeah. the well building standard actually applies to uh, new and existing buildings, uh, new and existing interiors and core and shell buildings. So you can in fact uh, make some changes to your building if it's an existing building and get it well certified. This is also the, the focus with the well health safety rating because it focuses on operational side of things. So even within the well certification, you have this flexibility to customize depending on where you are in the project. So if you have a project that is an old building, you can also um, uh, customize the features that you are. Uh, and it's actually automatically customized for you on the user interface and the scorecards. That's great because I visited the, the, the space I visited actually in Doha. It's uh, the well certification was done on existing space within the building. So it's like office they rented within the existing building, not green building, uh, not a green certified building. So they had to like kind of invest a little bit to change the space and enhance uh, especially systems like AC and ventilation but then uh, they got uh, well uh, certification and then uh, this is within the building that is not itself a, a green building by by uh, certification yeah. rating yeah. but so they, they they gave a great example to other uh, tenants within the building then also they seek uh, they were encouraged. yeah yes. they were encouraged also yeah. to seek and improve their space to be more uh, either yeah. an, like uh, energy efficient or like uh, health and well like improve health and well-being on their occupants which is great yeah. So, by example, you lead. Uh, if, do we have more questions? No. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Uh, this session will be recorded and shared uh, through our uh, YouTube channel, and we'll be sharing with everyone who registered for this course. Uh, thank you again, Tasneem. I hope we will cooperate more in the future regarding the well certification system. And uh, thank you, everyone, uh, once again from on behalf of KGBC. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.